eyes. Will I let anyone touch my eyes? In his eyes? Should they be any different? Less important to me? Should Israel be as dear to my heart as it is to his? Is she called the apple of God's eye because it's the most sensitive part of him? Or is it because that if you hurt Israel, you're not only hurting the apple of his eyes, but the center of his heart? My story begins with you, a protector of Israel. You're sitting there in your country and you want to write your story, but can't. What do you have to write about that's beyond your yesterday, your today, and tomorrow? All the stories of your life seem so meaningless, insignificant, and dull. You came to a point in your life where you realize that you want to stop writing your own story. You want to write his story. You want to be what he wants you to be. You want to do what he wants you to do. Now you just can't stop gazing into the endless eye of God, the apple's eye. But how come he's tearing? This most precious limb of God is left so defenseless, alone, hurting, bleeding, and coldly wet with tears. I see this global evil that brings me back to my hard memories of you. Maybe the question why God has put you on this earth in a time like this. The question. What is God saying to you now? And I believe there's a sacrifice here in everyone's life and the fire is on us. Finally, we will, walking, we will be walking up to the Temple Mount and bringing the offering from the nations to our Lord. This is the land that he gave us, but it's on condition that we learn to honor the God of Israel. The question that continues to echo in my head, and I'm listening, listening, looking for an answer. I'm so happy to do this movie, you know. For that quest, I met Jan Willem Wanderhoven, the director of ICCC, 
the International Christian Science Center to personally hear and see who is the man behind the vision. It started in a stable. He didn't come to a palace. But when he comes back, he will not come to Bethlehem. He will come to the most beautiful, magnificent temple house built for him that Ezekiel describes. The church started on one side when the Holy Spirit fell. There were thousands of believers who came to him. And it's going to end on one side. When it started, it's going to end. He is an ambassador, taking ground anywhere he goes, advocating on behalf of Israel all over the world. And Israel is already so small that you say, God, what has come into the mind of the Israelis? A biblical basis that will never depart from your heart. For it is only when you know why Israel, according to the Bible, is so important. They will not decide the future of Israel. The living God of Israel who loves you I remember then listening to Jan Bill for the first time with new ears, thinking this man is a man that God is going to use for the Jewish people because he speaks with clarity for the Jewish audience. He also speaks to the Christians, but for us at last we have someone who comes from the outside and says, I love you the way God loves you. But I'm also going to be critical of some of the things you do. This is a partnership that was made in heaven and is done on earth. But above all, it's a partnership of the heart. And you are a wonderful friend. John Van Der Hoeven. I have enormous respect for his principles. These basic fundamental principles that guide his life. He could not wait with excitement to take me to the heart of the places where the history of Israel was written and will be written again. So this, uh, this is Ir David. Right? This, this was where our King David, they found now the palace of David. That's where the ark stood. So this was David's city right underneath there. And so when David woke up, he says, Lord, you are living in a tent, I'm living in a palace, you should be living there. So now that Ir David has been developed, this is all one big praise to God. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. And these people with great love have, have found the ancient walls, so no honest archaeologist or historian can deny this was the city of David. This was not the Palestinian or Quds where never Jews were. It's strategic places like Judea and Samaria that Jan Willem brings people from all over the world to support and encourage whole communities that are at the front. There they meet some of the key personalities. Professor Moshe Sharon. Islam is a warring religion. It had the sword before it had the Quran. And the idea is to rule the world. Any territory which had ever been occupied by Islam is an Islamic territory forever. And therefore I've got a message for Spain. If there are some Spanish people, they should know it. Spain is Andalus. And as far as the Muslims are concerned, it is going to become Andalus again if the Spanish people do not pay attention to it in time. This also includes Provence, Sicily, it includes southern Italy. These were Muslim territories, I'm not talking about Israel. Beware Europe, you are on the way to becoming an Islamic country because there is one thing which you got to remember. There is an appeasement in Europe and there is political correctness which is killing it. Europe is the cancer, Islam is the answer.
There is no such a word in the vocabulary of the Arabs. The word peace does not exist in the Quran. And neither is the word love mentioned in the Quran. What is this enemy we're facing? How can we deal with it? You know, it is really unbelievable. I just thought, here is a city that you would think everybody loves. With all the tourists here, where you can film them, everybody would love the city. No, no nation nearly has their embassy here. I don't believe there's been a connection of any people to any city as powerful, as durable, as long-lasting, as passionate as the connection of the Jewish people to their one city, Jerusalem. We come not just like a mouse, I will give you a mouse to pray for you, to help them, to carry them, to fight for them, to come each year at the Feast of Tabernacles. And if they say, now, this is my center, this center will be theirs. The Lord put upon my heart, very close to here, to put a center, to say, okay, the nations will go against God. But you can bless yourself. If there are six million Israeli Jews, I can tell you, without feeling I exaggerate, there are 60 million Bible-believing Christians from China to Peru, from Canada to New Zealand. I heard there are 70 million Bible-believing Christians in China. I want to tell them, Listen, even if your nations will not have their embassy, you will have an embassy. The Jews have a center, they call it Jewish agency. The Christians also will have a center, Christian agency. There are nine million Jews in the world who through the Jewish agency plant trees, help hospitals. I said, now come on Christians, you're 10 times as many at least. Even if the last nation, America, will fall away, we will put our feet through this center on the land and we will learn all the ways in which we can economically, media-wise, politically, prophetically, through praise and prayer, undergird this nation so that this nation will fall into the arms of God. This center, Emmanuel, it's the home. We say that the Jewish people were blinded. We today are blind. I said, Lord, touch the people to rise up like an army. Please touch them. As Yom Rov are going, he tell Hashem, Lassot in Ele. He tell Hashem, Lassot in Imanu, Vahayim Smechim. Then the Goyim said, God does great things to them. And then we said, oh yes, God does, does great things for us, and then we became happy. What does that mean? It means that first the Goyim recognize that God is doing great things for us, and say it out loud and point it out to us. And only then do we realize that yes, indeed, what is going on here is a tremendous miracle that God is doing for us. And then, then we're happy. Israel, with a population of half of a world city like New York, only six million Jews stand and have no major power or nation to support her against the Hezbollah, the nuclear weapons of Ahmadinejad, the Hamas, the Syrians with their VX nerve gas, and they stand with a critical Europe, with a critical UN. I says, oh God. You're going to the UN. You're going to a house of darkness about Israel. And what you have to remember are two things. Who you represent and what you represent. You represent the Jewish people and you must speak the truth. And remember that in the largest hall, fully dark, if you light one candle, one candle, it dispels the darkness. Now, the world has any future at all, Emmanuel. And, but it needs not theology, not just Bible study. It needs us to do to Israel what the Lord did for us. 
He became us. The Son of God became the Son of Man, and we have to become the Jewish people. Their people should be our people, and their God is already our God through Jesus. I want you to hold each of you a candle, a candle for truth. I want you to be the ambassadors of truth. I want to create this center. I want to say to the people, do you really want to know what it is that Israel needs. She needs a brother, not a theologian, not a preacher. She needs a brother. Can you understand? This nation bleeds from a thousand wounds. Especially You know, this man was nearly in wrecks. He tried to help others that had been exploded by a suicide terrorist. And as he was trying to minister, he had left his car even running. Another terrorist came to all the people that had surrounded the victims of the first terrorist attack and blew himself up on him. It's a miracle to see him stand here. I had now an Israeli in my meeting in Rotterdam, and he whispered in my ear just before I spoke, Ata Yerushalmi. Are you a Jerusalemite? After I spoke, I, I said to him, what are you doing here? He says, I have nothing to go back to. My parents sat in the bus in Jaffa that was attacked by a terrorist and they were sitting together, dead. I have no brother, no sister, no wife. I fought in Hamas and the whole world criticizes us. So I left everything. I looked at him. I thought, God, this is just one, one Israeli. The situation in Israel is very, very hard, very, very hard to live. But we have the, we have you to support us. We have you to give us love, to give us help in whatever you can. Like a villain. What, what I felt is Israel is bleeding from so many. This is just one. I could repeat it hundred, thousand times over. People have lost their grandparents in the Auschwitz, lost their sons in the wars of Israel, or lost their parents in terrorist attacks. And what does the world do? Criticize, criticize, criticize. I says, when are we going to rise up as real brothers and say, Israel needs you to come with a bleeding heart and say, I'll do anything for you. Mm. Tell me, tell me how I can help you. Love your friend as you love, as you love yourself. This is the whole Torah. That's what the center will do. To tell the millions of believers to be a force for Israel when America will be the last nation that will fall away from supporting Israel. Is his pain also your pain? Are his people also your people? Is the apple of his eye yours too?